Hello, and I need to turn my sound up, sorry. <laughs> I'd add my sound down and no good lighting in here. So thank you guys for being here today. I really appreciate it. And gosh, it's been a, quite a while. Uh, I have been, as you can see, I am, I'm in the back room of our RV right now, and we've been on this trip for about a month. And so I haven't been doing any lives simply, well, simply because I've been lazy and because um, it's, it's not the easiest place to do it, but I think it's just going to be fine. So today I wanted to talk really quick, okay, we'll wrap this up in 20 minutes or less, about changing habits. It seems to be something that I hear a lot in my fitness group in, inside Superfit and inside Fittest Freedom Experience. And it's, it's just like, you know, how do you change a habit and keep a habit? And so today I want to just kind of talk about some of my ideas that how this works and give you some suggestions based on um, the women in the group. So first thing, and I, I do have some notes, so I'm in check notes today. Um, Changing habits a lot of times is, it, it comes from two things. One of them, it's like retraining your brain, okay? You have to, you have to train your brain to um, do what you want it to do because your brain's job is to, is to take care of you. If you've always done something a particular way, then that must be the best way right? Because you've always done it that way. So that's your brain's job is to keep you doing it that way. And that's why hap change, habit changing is so difficult because we have all these neurons that are in there that are saying, hey, you know what? This is the way we've always done it. Let's keep doing it this way. So it's, it starts with awareness, okay? It also starts with um, changing the way you think about certain habits. Um, and it starts with having your brain understand that when you tell it something, it's the truth. Okay. And I'll explain to that, that in just a second. So let me just run down these habits, real, or these notes real quick. Um, so first, let's just start with awareness because awareness is where everything begins. And this is being aware of habits that you want to change. Okay, that's one part. Being aware of what it is that you want. Okay, that is different than changing a habit, right? Maybe a habit is um, a habit change that you want to do is um, you want to eat less sugar. Okay, so that's something that you may want to do. But until you're totally aware of why that matters, a lot of times it just kind of gets pushed to the side and pushed to the side because, you know, it's more fun <laughs> for me to eat the bagel than to go, hey, you know what, wait a second, why why did I want to make this change? What What is this change going to do for me? Um, so being aware of what you want, also being aware of what triggers you. And so what, trigger, what triggers are is whatever it is that clicks that piece in your brain that says, oh, you know what? I want to, let's just, let's just go with the, let's go with the bagel thing. Um, you know what? That bagel looks really good. I want to have it. So what's my trigger? My trigger is visual. My trigger is um, remembering how much I've enjoyed bagels in the past. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with bagels, y'all. I'm just happened to use this because this is something that came up for me just recently. Um, maybe another trigger is Triggers can be good. Okay, I'm, they're not all bad. So let's talk. We'll talk about you know the ones that that catch you off guard, and then we'll talk about the triggers that you can create. So the ones that catch you off guard. Another one might be um, a certain time of day, uh, a certain person, um, a certain being stuck in traffic. Maybe that's a trigger for for you know getting getting wound up, and you don't want to be wound up anymore. Uh, so knowing what your triggers are. Looking at what the simplest steps are that you can take, and we will come back to this because this is really important. A lot of times when we decide to do something different, we decide to make a change, um, we get that all or nothing mentality. And instead, it's so much easier if you start small 
and then slowly work your way into what it is that you want. Um, and then another one is where are you, where are you operating on autopilot? Okay. This is all under awareness, just in life. Where are you operating on autopilot? Um, a good, a good, for instance, for that would be, um, I have a client who she would like to work out in the morning. That's, that's her preference, but she has a family that would like her to take care of all the things in the morning. So her autopilot, like, automatic way of being is that she just gets up and she does what the family needs, which is fine. I mean, that's what she likes to do. And the other thing is, is it's stopping her from doing what she wants to do, um, which is being consistent with her workouts in the morning. So just that whole idea of going, you know, when she wakes up, it's not okay, you know, I've got all my stuff put out, like we call FPA in the group, which is friggin' plan ahead. I've got all my stuff put out. I'm going to do my autopilot's going to be, I'm going to work out. Instead, it's my autopilot is I automatically have to take care of everything for the family. Okay. Um, another one is, what are you fighting? This is all falling under awareness, right? So in your world, in your day-to-day -day life, in what you're doing, what are you fighting against? Like what's, what's holding you back? What's, um, what's slowing you down? What do you, what's, where are the blocks, the roadblocks in your world? And then stepping from awareness. And the next thing is, is that, hang on, I've got a, a dry throat today. We are in Montana and Montana is quite beautiful. Um, but I've noticed this whole trip, like, dry. <laughs> I'm dry because I come from this like, you know, swamp of Houston with, where everything's like wet. So instead, um, I, I do catch myself being dry quite a bit. All right. So first thing is, is let's talk about simply training your brain. Okay. And one way to train your brain that I think is really effective is to let you let, when I say train your brain, it's almost like I'm act, acting as if your brain is separate. And in a way it is, okay? In a way, your brain's job is to, you know, regulate all the things. Your breathing, your, you know, everything that's going on in your body, right? It's just like done. Um, so we have to tell it that when we want to make a change, it can trust that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. And in a podcast, uh, a couple of years ago, I think I used this example. And what happens is that if you say, okay, let me think, let me give you a, let me give you a solid example. You say, I'm going to start working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. This is, this is what I'm going to do. But you work out Monday and then Wednesday things are busy and you think up, oh, okay, well, I'll, go, I'll do it tomorrow. And then you don't do it tomorrow. Um, well, what you've done is you've basically told yourself that what you have to say isn't necessarily 100% um, truthful. It isn't necessarily spot on. So, so when you train your brain, you start by doing little things, right? Like really little things. And if you roll your eyes, this is perfect because it means this is small enough for you to see the change. So you say, okay, um, I'm going to drink six glasses of water today. Okay. And so then you say, okay, I'm going to drink some water. And then a few minutes later, I'm going to have some water to drink. And you do it again, right? When you do that, and every time you say it, you do it. Uh, you start creating this habit of consistency. Okay. This is where, this is where all the consistency comes from. Like you, you say you're going to do something, you do it, you acknowledge that you've done it. Okay. So now all of a sudden you've got this, this bar. Okay. The example I was going to tell you that I used on a podcast the other couple years ago, I had um, told myself that for a certain period of time, I was going to finish all my showers with a 30 to 90 second cold shower. And which was super easy during the summer. Okay. Super easy because it's hot. I'm not even taking hot showers. Not a problem. So, you know, I would say mm, I'm getting in the shower. I'm going to finish my shower with, um, 
with 30 to 90 seconds of cold water. And I did this really like religiously, really great. Um, but as it started getting colder in the year, I noticed that I had to like step it up and go, I am going to do this and do that and do it right. Like consistent. And then one night I went to bed and I realized that after that shower I took that I hadn't taken the cold water plunge. Um, and there was, <laughs> this is one of the harder things I've ever done because I really love sleep. I, I just went, you know what? I told myself I would do this. It was actually for six months. I told myself I would do this for six months. I missed a night. And if I tell myself that, well, tomorrow I'll catch up, then I'm basically letting myself down on that habit. So I got out of bed, went in the shower, turned on the cold water. Wasn't a big deal. Dried off, got back in bed, went right to sleep. So, but in doing that, what happened was all of a sudden I realized that I was trusting myself more to make the habit changes. So that's where I'm going with this, right? You, when you, when you consistently say what you're going to do, do it, and then say thank you or acknowledge that you did it, then you're starting to teach yourself to be really, really consistent. So this gets into the three um, different things I wanted to talk about with habit changes. One of them, this one you've, you've heard about it a lot, right? This, this became very popular in um, Atomic Habits. So when he wrote the book Atomic Habits, his, this whole book, The Premise of Atomic Habits, is basically habit stacking. So all habit stacking is, is that you already have a habit that you do, you add another habit onto it, okay? Like, super easy one. I've got somebody right now in the group. She said, um, sh last month, she wanted to walk every day. That was her, that was her goal. I'm going to walk every day. And when she looked at the end of the month, she said she'd done pretty good. I think she'd hit like 60%. Um, 80% and you're pretty much rocking it, right? 100% and you're pff, done. But for her, she it was about 60%. So what she said was she, she wrote in the group and she said, okay, so that was just based on every day I get up and do this no matter what's happening. So this time, what I'm doing this month is I'm going to do squats every day. But since I know I wash, brush my teeth every single day, after I brush my teeth, before anything else happens, I do my squats. So that is a habit stack, right? You've already got something that you do. Brushing the teeth is like, that's like one of the most frequently used ones. Another one that um, I know we have in the group that I see people doing is somebody, they like coffee. So when they're making their coffee, they're doing some sort of exercise in the kitchen. Maybe they're doing push-ups off the counter or squats or whatever it is. Um, that is a habit stack. It's probably the easiest way to start a new habit, okay? Um, because when you're thinking about habits, you're either starting one or stopping one. Starting a new habit, I tend to think is probably easier, but um, so you, you're starting something new, you have something you already do, you just add that new thing onto it, give yourself a time frame. Like for my one person now, it's 30 days, 30 days, squats after um, toothbrushes and done, right? That's habit stacking. So that's when you want to add in a habit. It's also really good for um, when we talk about fitness consistency, but, but just for like, you know, a simple, simple thing right now, that's a good one. Um, a way to get rid of a habit this is something that we use a lot in sugar freedom. And this is basically when you remove, you remove the, generally the trigger if you can. So here's how we use it in sugar freedom. Let's say that somebody wants to, to start, you know, going sugar free or lowering their sugar or whatever it is, like bringing that, bringing that down. What the first thing we do ever is we declutter all the, all the habits, all the sugar, all the, all the foods that would trigger you to go, oh man, sure would be nice to have, you know, that ice cream that's in the freezer or whatever it is, right? So that's when you make a physical change. And that physical change can also be something like, um, you can replace the ice cream with maybe some frozen fruit. 
if that's you know that's a change or you you notice that you every day at five o'clock you're you're triggered to have a snack or maybe it's every day at 10 o'clock whatever it is so then the way you use that physical change is by saying okay when it gets close to that time i'm going to do something different before the time even happens like uh, for instance if you normally snack at 10 o'clock at night then you could say that you're, you're going to go to bed earlier or your snack is going to be um, you already have a piece of fruit out uh, it, it's right it's you get the idea it's different for everybody but you're looking for physical changes that you can make in your environment that are going to um, are going to help you make that habit work and then another one is, and this is one that I really like, um, it's future imaging or future imagining or seeing yourself the way you want it to be. So the first thing you want to do is you want to say, okay, what is the habit that I want to change? Am I adding something in? Am I taking something away? Okay. Why? That's the next question. Why do you want to do that? Okay, and the reason you ask yourself this is because you're going to be able to see what that habit change is going to do for you. Okay, so if let's say just let's just stick with the sugar thing because it's easy. Um, actually, I have a better one. Let me give you um, one that I've been. I have a client who who's had some some stuff that came up lately around anxiety, and so what she wanted to do was to basically remove all that anxiety that's that's causing her issues okay so why ah, a million reasons right you feel better you're healthier um, life is easier you're not taking drugs um, and not that I'm against I'm I'm not against taking drugs when you need to but if you can do something different then maybe that's going to help right so um, so for her she wanted to have a future where she's relaxed she's um comfortable she isn't having these you know attacks where all of a sudden she's like <gasps> what's going on i'm you know i'm i'm melting down so so then what's that going to do for her she knows it's going to create all these good things the next question is how is it going to feel okay and this is a big piece so how is it going to feel whatever it is that you want let's say that let's say that what you want is you want to become more consistent with your workouts okay so you create an idea what's that what is it specifically um, to be more consistent with my workouts means that um, I'm gonna work out five days a week four days a week three days a week two days a week doesn't matter what it is it's whatever it works for you right this is what I'm gonna do you can then you get very specific and then you also know what's it going to do for you you'll be healthier um, better moods you know all the stuff right all the stuff that consistent exercise gives you then you next have to ask yourself how does that feel like literally how's it going to feel in your body when you're doing those things um, you're gonna feel confident you're gonna feel um, you're going to feel like you've done something that you've always wanted to do. So you're going to be proud of yourself. Um, you'll feel accomplished. You'll feel um, more energetic. You'll feel more excited. Like there's all these feelings that come, right? When you, when you do those things that you say you're going to do. So you take those two pieces and all you have to do for a future ima imagining is and I prefer, prefer this in the morning maybe even before you get out of bed right just before you even get up you just have this image and the image is what is it that you're going to do what's what's that thing that you want and get it really clear in your head and then at the same time feel like literally feel in your body all those emotions that doing that is going to give you okay and sometimes people say oh Kelly you know I, I don't have that good imagination um, we have great imaginations all of us sometimes though we don't realize that we're in 
controllable. So my suggestion is, is to step away from here and, you know, use habit stacking because it's a great way to add a habit. Um, use the physical changes, like take away the things that are, um, that are triggering you so that you can remove a habit. But then when you want to create something magical, something big, something that matters, then that's where you're going to write it out, get very, very clear on what it is that you want, get very clear on how it feels in your body, what's the, what are the emotions that it creates, and then allow yourself to have those feelings two or three or four times a day or more, whatever it is that works for you. Um, coming back to my client that um, was having you know, some of the issues where she wasn't feeling really good in her body. So now she knows, like, how does it, how do I want to be? Well, I want to be relaxed. I want to be happy. I want to be energetic. I want to be somebody who's, you know, consistent with their exercise and having a great time. And how does that feel? Well, it feels like all those things. It feels like something that I've accomplished. It feels like something I'm proud of. It feels like something that gets me excited to get up in the day. So try those simple things and just remember the first step to any habit change is awareness. You just need to be aware of what it is that you want to change, why you want to change it, and then pick one of those three or all of those, all three of those um, habit changes and then do those. So let me know in the comments and I will see you next week. I think next week we're talking about energy, which is one of my favorite things to chat about. So see you there. Bye-bye.